it's Nadia from Modern Imaginings and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be explaining how I became involved in a batik workshop and some of the process involved, as well as some footage of the final flags which were made into an installation at the end. The design I chose for this project was a feather and I will go into the details of how this worked. And in order to get as much detail as possible for the design, I used a photograph and traced it as well as enlarged it on a scanner. Once I had a design down, the next part of the process was to transfer it to a pattern which was in the shape of the flag. And this was a lot of fun, just trying to fit all the feathers onto this shape of pattern paper. You can see the dots and crosses on this thin piece of paper. I then outlined all the pattern I had created with wax. Once the pattern had been transferred to a very thin piece of silk, I then had to iron the wax out of the silk and this is the result. This workshop was run by Ali Pretty who runs the Kinetica Artistic Organization and it was so much fun. We had outlined the pattern in wax, then it was dipped into a vat of dye, natural dyes, logwood and madder, which came in powdered form and were just tipped into tea urns for convenience. Once the dyeing had taken place, they were all hung up to dry and treated with additional chemicals to change the colors. My final flag was dark, matter. With the wax pattern I had left over on the paper, I decided I was going to make um, just a pattern which I might turn into a book cover or just put it in my sketchbook, something to keep for myself. Uh, so I just got out the watercolours and my paintbrushes and decided I was going to paint it. Of course I had to use the metallic paints and I chose a nice earthy red which is probably my very favourite colour in this metallic watercolour set. Following the outline of the feathers which I drew on the pattern was quite a long process, dipping the paintbrush into the wax and just following the lines. Because the feather was quite a delicate design, it was a little fiddly to paint with the wax. However, I now have the template home with me so I could make another flag of my own if I wished. However, my sewing is not the best, so uh, if this is a project I'm going to do in the future, I will proceed very cautiously and carefully. Once I had painted all the watercolour on, I decided I was going to try and iron the wax out of the paper. However, the paper was very absorbent and had actually absorbed quite a lot of the wax, so I wasn't able to get all of it out. But since this is just a pattern I'm using in my sketchbook, that's fine. What's so cool about this is that it, when you hold it up to the light, it is transparent. In fact, it would make a really nice paper lantern. One of the best things about the Kinetica art project was that it was a community art project and I'd never been involved in one of these before and I thought it was great fun to be part of a team who went to plant flags on the far beach and followed the guidelines drawn in the sand and we worked together and it was a fantastic feeling to be able to feel like a part of a wider community and once the flags were all planted they looked amazing. Here's me standing with my flag waving in the breeze and as we finished planting the flags the storm clouds started to come over. I then walked the length of the beach admiring all the different and varied designs that people had come up with. All these flags were inspired by the coastline and so there are lots of different designs based around sea creatures, seabirds, lots of fish, lots of plants and various other creatures. Just to see them in motion, flapping in the breeze was amazing and as the tide came in, it eventually came up some of the flags and uh, so that some of them were in the water. 
All the flags had additional pennants attached just to add to the interest and variety of the colours and textures and designs. This long procession way was amazing to walk. This project celebrates both the Scottish Year of Coasts and Waters as well as the upcoming UN Climate Conference happening in Glasgow in November. And the beauty of these flags in this natural environment highlights the beauty and diversity of the coastal regions. On that topic, earlier this year I submitted one of my encaustic wax paintings for the Great Scottish Canvas which will create a book and um, exhibition themed around the conservation which will be presented at the conference in Glasgow in November and uh, so I got accepted for one of my pieces for that so I will leave a link to that down in the description because it is coming out very shortly. In anticipation for the climate conference Ali Pretty will also be taking the flags on a pilgrimage from Edinburgh to Glasgow in uh, late October. I will also leave a link to that down in the description and so you can find out more information about that. If you're enjoying this video please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel, it will be much appreciated. During the course of these uh, photos and my walk, I could see the tide coming in slowly. However, I wasn't there as the tide covered some of the parts of the flags. I eventually walked back up to the harbour just as the church bells were sounding on Sunday morning. Thank you very much for watching.